At the beginning of the 21st century, a survey of wild kiwi on Whangarei Heads Peninsula in Northland put their number at about 80. This was what's known as a remnant population. In simple terms, these kiwi were survivors, mainly older birds able to fight off their main predator, the stoat. In Whangarei Heads, the same as all over the country, stoats were wiping out kiwi chicks. The national situation was dire, but here on the peninsula, a small group of locals were hopeful they could make a difference. We're a pretty special place out here geographically and ecologically, so we had some kiwi to start with. We were lucky to have 80 to start with. We had a beautiful place. We had a good community, we had good science background, we had good support from the Department of Conservation, good iwi support, and so we put the land care idea here. We already had lots of land care groups. That's people looking after stuff in their backyard. The Whangarei Heads Land Care Forum was formed in 2001 and began supporting local initiatives to trap stoats and help kiwi. The forum also wanted to understand the big picture, the ecology of the whole area. The first thing we did was got a science study done and that was really important because it set a credible platform for the work that was to come. The early research showed that there was some kiwi in remote bush in Whangarei Heads, and that was expected. But what was a surprise was finding many kiwi here were living on private land. In fact, they were free ranging across a wide variety of habitats and in many cases living very close to humans. This discovery led to locals stepping up the predator control and extending it into other parts of the peninsula. We did three or four years of just trapping. You know, that was all. And then we started bringing in kiwi, translocating them in and monitoring them and discovering that, yep, trapping was working, but the kiwi we were bringing in were being killed by dogs. Backyard Kiwi was formed in 2009 to promote awareness of kiwi in Whangarei heads and the challenges they face. And one of those challenges was the risk even small dogs pose to them. One of Todd Hamilton's roles in Backyard Kiwi is monitoring the small number of wild birds that have transmitters attached. Here, Todd is carrying out an annual health check on a male kiwi called Darwin and replacing the battery on his transmitter. It's a rare chance to actually see a kiwi close up and appreciate just how vulnerable they are to dogs. So those claws that rip the face off most things, but this chest here is weak as. You've only got to give it a gentle squeeze, break those bones, you've got a dead kiwi, and that's what a dog does. He comes up, just mouths it, because this guy smells like a lovely little puppy. His little old wings, not much good for anything, but that rib cage he hasn't got much beef to it, breaks easy. What we've tried to do is to make sure people know that what's special about the Pangarei Heads. So they know that there are kiwis here. They know that any dog can kill a kiwi, whether it means to or not. And they know that keeping their dog under control is actually what's needed. What this has meant in practice is more and more people are walking their dogs on leads and keeping their dogs controlled at night, either by tying them up or keeping them inside or in a secure area, one that dogs can't get out of and Kiwi can't get into. The result has been dramatic. The increasing dog awareness and the predator and pest control has led to Kiwi numbers here increasing from 80 in the early 2000s to more than 880 in 2018. This population is now growing by an estimated 10% a year. Nationwide, Kiwi are in a 2% decline. So a 10% increase is remarkable. These birds are very productive. You know, we've got birds like Darwin here. He's, he's been at it the last half a dozen years. But if we go down the road to Lambert, he's had 27 chicks. He's averaging almost three chicks a year. So our trapping's helping those chicks survive, and it's not a surprise we're getting more and more adult birds. 
and those adult birds are having chicks themselves. So we've got to that critical point where these Kiwi are looking after themselves. But the biggest risk to Kiwi at Whangarei Heads is complacency. We can lose what we've gained so quickly. We're still losing Kiwi on the roads. We have to constantly be on guard against stoats and we have to recognise the risk posed by dogs. We wouldn't have 880 plus adult Kiwi if people didn't tie their dogs up. They do. We're not dog haters. I'm a dog owner. Many people involved are. We just control our dogs. When I drive out in the morning to do my trapping round, I get a sore arm waving at dog owner after dog owner, walking their dog, happy to see me coming, not fearful of the Kiwi person coming, happy to see me, showing they're doing the right thing, they're walking their dog on the roadside, on a lead, Kiwi are fine. Todd is very well known in Whangarei Heads and highly visible. But as time has gone on and the backyard Kiwi story has progressively resonated, people's attitudes towards dogs and Kiwi are changing. Initially, Todd would get calls from people saying, you know, so-and-so's dog's out, come and do something about it. Increasingly, he now gets calls to say, so-and-so's dog was out, and I went and had the conversation with them. So people are taking ownership, and if you approach people right, you know, they don't want their dog to be a Kiwi killer. One thing that's made a crucial difference has been the annual Kiwi releases that connect people to their Kiwi. In early 2018, more than 400 people turned up to the release at Parua Bay. For many, this was their very first time seeing a kiwi in the flesh. Kiwi's a cryptic bird. You don't see them. You don't, you know, there's a lot of people out here who don't even hear them. Or if they hear them, they don't know that that's what they're hearing. So getting people along to seeing their birds, they become emotionally attached. Seeing people, locals getting there, seeing, smelling, getting to see a kiwi release in their backyard, it really engages them. They go home and tie their dogs up and, and pressure their neighbours into doing the same. Do the right thing. And we've got a really good community here doing the right thing. We love our dogs and we love living in a place with so many wild kiwi. That's why Backyard Kiwi has launched Take the Lead, to raise awareness of kiwi and dogs, what the risks for kiwi are and how they can be managed. Take the Lead is starting here and we'd love to see it expanding into other areas. What is happening in Whangarei Heads is phenomenal. Locals are so proud about their kiwi in their backyard. The kiwi population is growing every year they're living here right amongst us and our dogs, side by side. And that's really something to be treasured. To find out more about Take the Lead and the work of Backyard Kiwi, jump on the Backyard Kiwi website and follow us on Facebook. And please share this video with your friends.